James Parsons has retired as of a couple of days ago. Who's James Parsons? If you are not a at least New Zealand rugby fan, most New Zealand rugby fans should know him. Super rugby fans may know him. Um, international rugby fans may not know him. He was a long-time serving hooker for the Blues here in Super Rugby. He was the captain for a couple of years. And he was a two-time all-black, long-time servant of the North Harbour Provincial Team in the Mitre 10 Cup. He's a guy who's had a long career in New Zealand rugby. And there's like a couple of interesting things about his career. Obviously, I'm a Blues man, so I'm, I'm more partial to to being supportive of his career, but I also note that he's been playing at a time when we've got a lot of other good guys in his position, and he took over from a proper legend of New Zealand and Blues rugby, so he's not had the easiest time in terms of his reception from the fans. But nonetheless, he's had a pretty a pretty impressive career. Like It's easy for us to look at the top guys, like the absolute elite guys, and look at a guy like James Parsons and go, man, he is rubbish. But ultimately, a guy who's played for the All Blacks twice and had a 100-plus Super Rugby game career is still a pretty bloody good rugby player who would demolish most of us club team players, whoever it else it is, that we, we you know, armchair fans uh, that watch the game. So is he the best hooker in New Zealand rugby's ever seen? No, but is he a guy who had a, a pretty profitable career? As I mentioned, at a time when we were really blessed with depth and talent. Yep, that's pretty much where James Parsons was at. So yeah, he started off with Harbour. Uh, eventually made his way to the Blues in 2012. He made his way to the Blues as we kind of started our descent into proper, proper... I don't even want to say mediocrity. I want to say like... What's the word? Uh, being abysmal. Our low point. He spent the majority of his career, and he's a one-club man. He spent the majority of his career with the club while we were rubbish. Now, you could say that the fact that he was with the club those years kind of highlights the fact that the best the Blues could get was like the fifth or sixth choice hooker in New Zealand. Maybe that's part of the reason the Blues were so poor. I don't know if that's fair, because rugby's a team game. 15 guys, 23 in the squad, or you know, even more. But, um, yeah, I think the last time we made the playoffs was 2011. And he started his career with the Blues in 2012. So I don't think in his 115 game Blues career, he would have ever played a knockout game at all, which is pretty, pretty disappointing. But I assume that there's, there's, there's guys in loads of teams across the sport who have played a lot of games without ever playing a knockout game, but a hundred games and no knockout games is particularly disappointing. An eight-year career at Super Rugby level. Yeah. So no trophies with the Blues. No real success with the Blues. Pat Lamb would have been coach. He was there during John Kerwin's reign. And then he was there when, um, when Tana Umanga took over. He took over the captaincy from Jerome Kaino. And then he lost it to Augustine Pulu. He was the captain for like a year and a half, I think. Um, and then was just kind of our first choice hooker for quite some time and then floated between first choice and second choice. So 100 game career is still nothing to, to turn up your nose at. Um, I should also say he took over from Kevin Mayalamu, who most rugby fans, if you watched rugby during that guy's career, would probably know he was the All Blacks first choice hooker for a bloody long time. So he often played second fiddle to Kevin Mayalamu at the start of his career and then when Mayalamu retired, he was our number one guy. So he had some pretty big shoes to fill. And for a lot of fans, he probably didn't fill them. But that's that's the thing when taking over from a legend like that. So, uh, yeah, that's probably not endeared him to a lot of other fans. He did make the All Blacks in 2014. He played, I think it was Scotland over at Murrayfield. He started. So he played a, a solid game. I went back and watched his post-match interview. And uh, he seemed pretty chuffed and you know hungry for more games is the line he used. Unfortunately, he wouldn't get his next one until 2016 when he got like, I think, 30 minutes off the bench in a game against Australia in the Rugby Championship. And even that was only because I think Nathan Harris and Cody Taylor were injured. So he was 
peaked in probably 2014 and then made his way down the pecking order in New Zealand. He was the Blues MVP for one year, I think in 20, I want to say 18. But um, yeah, in terms of his All Blacks career, it never really got off the ground. But as I mentioned, Cody Taylor has been at the Crusaders. Dane Coles has been at the Canes. Nathan Harris at the Chiefs. I'm always coming through at the Canes. Um, Liam Coltman seemed to be ahead of him. So there's been a lot of guys who have been ahead of him in kind of that, that pecking order at All Blacks level. And um, yeah, it's been a tough one for him in that regard. So yeah, he's not had it easy. Like most guys who play a 100 game for a career, a uh, 100 game club career would be pretty well regarded. But I still feel like there's a little bit of a shade of doubt about James Parsons because he took over from Big Kev, because we've had so much depth in that position in New Zealand, and because the Blues have pretty much sucked the majority of the time that he's been there. So, yeah. A bit tough on old James. Um, it looks like he's going to go into a career of punditry. So despite the fact that he's having to retire due to concussions, his brain is still in good enough condition. I don't say that too tongue-in-cheek. That's kind of tongue-in-cheek, which is maybe not called for. But you know what I mean? The guy's a smart guy. He went to a really good high school here in New Zealand, a private school. So he's, he's pretty good. You know, he's pretty good with his analysis and his, uh, his punditry. He does some podcasts and whatnot over here in New Zealand, which is really great to see. Um, compared to some other guys who've had much more glamorous careers than him on the field, he's a way better speaker off it. Like some of these guys, I won't name names, but some of them are atrocious to listen to. Whereas James is actually, you know, uh, he knows his stuff. So there's a helicopter flying over my house, probably looking for the rest of his All Blacks caps. He didn't get them. But um, yeah. James Parsons, man, 100 cap career with the Blues, two caps with the All Blacks, not much in the way of silverware, as I mentioned, he would have got a Tri-Nations or Rugby Championship medal, I guess, for for that game when he participated with the All Blacks in 2016 when we won the, the Rugby Championship, but like at Super Rugby level, it never really happened, and um, other than that, yeah, didn't quite crack on at the international level, but still, 100 game career loyal servant that's probably the main the main unique factor about him is most guys in his position when they're that fourth or fifth choice guy they go overseas and i know hookers when we've looked at those pay analysis videos about like which positions get paid the most money hookers are way down there but i'm still sure he could have got paid more than he did in, in auckland so credit to the guy for sticking it out for sticking with such a bad team for not taking money uh, to go abroad and uh, yeah I wish him all the best in his career in punditry I hope his concussion things kind of you know subside and that he's all all good to go in the long term because uh, yeah I know for some guys that can be pretty tough but anyway uh, yeah good man for serving the blues for so long wish him all the best as I said uh, you guys let me know your thoughts on James Parsons career are you one of his critics who thinks he was a distinctly average player or are you one of his supporters who uh, thinks he never quite got a fair crack you guys let me know your thoughts talk to you again soon see you later